So you have a bunch of small paintings on gesso boards and you're wondering how to frame them. I find that floater frames are the best solution and that's because they have a lot of benefits. You don't need to frame it behind glass and it doesn't require any specialized tools. Floater frames come in a variety of sizes and they can accommodate flat gesso boards or cradled gesso boards. The benefit of using the floater frame is that the full painting gets displayed, the edges don't get hidden. If you look at a regular frame, it has a recessed edge called a rabbit that hides maybe a quarter inch of the painting. So if you look at a small painting like this, my signature's down here, that actually covers it up and it hides part of the painting. That might not matter on a large painting that's 18 by 24, but on a painting this small, that quarter inch does cover up quite a bit of the painting. And that's why I like using floater frames. So a floater frame is really easy to use. You don't need that many tools. All you need is a pencil, a ruler, a pair of scissors, wire cutters, and some type of adhesive. You can use wood glue, silicone, and I'm going to use foam tape for this one. I have all these five by seven paintings on gesso boards. I find that a floater frame is the best way to frame them. So I'll show you how I do that next. You wanna put something down to protect your artwork and the frame. This is a silicone mat, but you can also use a towel or a piece of fabric. All the hardware is included. And to open this up, it says open here. You just lift that up and then you can slide it right out of the frame. You wanna save this cardboard because we'll use it to hold the painting in position. There's a set of instructions. Here's the bag of hardware that has the screws and the hanging hardware. You'll notice that there's two sets of risers. These thin ones are for three quarter inch panels or canvases. I'll use these later in the video when I frame a three quarter inch panel. And these are for different flat panels. One thing you really wanna pay attention to is that one side is longer than the other. And that's to accommodate different thicknesses of panels. For an eighth inch panel, you wanna use the tallest edge like this. For a quarter inch panel, you wanna position it so it's lower. Make sure you attach the risers so that they're all the same. So the reason why you need risers is because if you just put this in the frame like this, it sinks to the bottom and that doesn't look right. For adhesives, you have three different options. You can use wood glue, silicone adhesive, or double-sided foam tape. If you're looking for something permanent, you could use wood glue. If you ever tried to separate two pieces of wood that have been glued together, it's usually the wood that gives out before the glue. Silicone is really strong too, but it is reversible and I used it in my duo frame demo. But for this demo, I'm going to use double-sided foam tape. And I found this tape from Arteza. It's double-sided and acid-free, and it can hold up to 2.2 pounds per square inch. For this first step, you turn the painting over and you wanna attach the risers to the back of the painting. On a small painting like this, you could probably eyeball it, but it does help if you measure the center. This is seven inches wide, so three and a half would be the middle, and two and a half is the middle for the other edge. It's hard to see the pencil on camera, so I'll just use a marker. This foam tape has a red backer on there, which is nice because you can tell if it's been removed or not. You want the painting on top of here because as I said, you wanna use the tallest edge, and that means we'll wanna position the tape like so. So you can just press it down like this and then cut at this edge. Peel off the backing and this side is sticky too. You don't wanna position it right on the edge because you might see that block from the front. You wanna move it in slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch. Once you have it where you want it, you just press it down. It can be a little tricky to get this red backing tape off, but once you do a few of them, you get the hang of it. I use a utility knife to get it started. I have all four risers attached to my painting. You flip it over and you can drop it in the frame. And now it's at the right height. So this is where the cardboard from the packaging comes in handy. What you wanna do is rip it up and wedge it into the sides of the frame. So what we're trying to do is center this and then wedge the cardboard in there to hold it in place so we can turn it over and drive the screws into it. It'll make sense as I do it. Now that's one sheet folded in half. A lot of times I'll take little pieces and wedge it in there so it's really secure. Okay, that's in there pretty good. And then you just sort of like adjust it so that the spacing is even all the way around the frame. Now you can lift it up and it doesn't fall out. Carefully turn it over. In the bag of hardware, look for the four screws. You can use a drill to drive these in, but you gotta be careful that you don't overdo it. So I just use a regular screwdriver and I take my time. I usually flip it over and check to make sure the spacing is still correct. That looks good, so I'll put the other two in. I'll turn it over and then remove the cardboard. All you have to do now is attach the hardware. You wanna attach the wire about a third of the way down. So this is six inches, so that'd be two inches. They recommend using a 3 seconds of an inch drill bit to drill the guide holes. If this were a cradled panel or a canvas, you would drill into that. But since there's nothing really to drill into here, you would drill into the side of the frame. Before you drill, you wanna put your safety glasses on. There's the hole, it's two inches from the top of the frame and you can use an electric drill. Sometimes I use a manual drill. So these are the screw eyes. You just turn them in there 
Usually you can just turn these in by hand, but if it gets too difficult, you can use a screwdriver to get some leverage. There's more than enough picture hanging wire. You want to cut a little bit of extra so you got room to work with. You can use scissors or wire cutters to cut this. There's a bunch of different ways to tie picture hanging wire, but the easiest is to just insert it through the screw eye, wrap it underneath the wire, and then back through the screw eye. And that creates a loop that closes in on itself. And then to finish it off, you just wrap it around the wire. Four or five times is usually enough. You could trim this excess wire here, or you could just wrap it around the wire itself. This is a little too long, so I'll use wire cutters to cut the excess. The last step is to put the rubber bumpers on the bottom corners. I was curious as to how strong this foam tape is, so I glued together two pieces of gesso board. You can see the foam tape along the four edges. Let's see how hard it is to remove this. That's really sturdy. I think the way to separate these boards is to cut through the foam. Then it's just a matter of scraping off the residue. This foam tape is really strong, but the good thing is that it looks like it's reversible. So this is a three quarter inch panel, and that's when you use the thin eighth inch risers. Everything else in the process is pretty much the same. The way that you attach the picture hanging wire and the bumpers, it's all the same. The only difference is in the risers. When I place the three quarter inch panel in there, it sits in there too deep. You can see the edges a little too high. These risers are an eighth of an inch thick, and that's just the right height for this panel. When I set that in there, that sits in there much nicer. You do want it to sit a little bit lower than the edge of the frame, so the frame will protect the painting. In this case, I'm going to use the silicone adhesive. And that's because the foam tape is one and a half millimeters thick, and when you add it to these spacers, it might be a little too much. So I'll just put a little bit along the edge. You want to leave a little bit of a space. You don't want it right to the edge. You should let the silicone dry overnight, or at least for a couple of hours. That way it won't slide around as you drive the screws through the frame. You can cut the cardboard one and a half inches by two inches, and then you fold it lengthwise. That way it's about the height of the panel. The process is pretty much the same as the 5x7. You wedge the cardboard in here to hold it in place while you turn it over. Then you attach it to the frame using the four screws. To attach the wire, measure a third of the way down from the top and drill holes for the screw eyes. Finally, attach the wire and bumper pads, and it's all finished.